I've been wanting to get to doing the bracing of the back and the top, but it's raining today and my shop relative humidity is about 70%. I've got the tops and the backs inside the house where the relative humidity is a little bit less, but I really can't get going on that at this point. So uh, looking around for things to do on this build, I'm going to be doing my uh, fingerboard today. Uh, looking through my stock uh, on the Jake build, I actually found this fretboard that I'd made a while ago. Uh, it's the right scale length, uh, material is Catalox with a curly maple binding. Hey, it's going to match up to the binding that, I'm, that I've chosen for the uh, Jake build. So I don't have anything to do on that one. On the uh, all spruce, I'm going with a Cocobolo fretboard. Uh, pretty piece here. I think it's the uh, same material that I used on the all cedar. It's a little bit oversized right now, but I like that. Uh, it gives me a little bit of room to work it down. Um, I found a piece of ebony material that I'll be using for the binding on it. And I've pulled out my 25.4 scale template that I've got for this. It's a little bit longer than what's on the plan, but I wanted to do a longer scale here. I'm going to have to make some adjustments in the bracing and the location of the bridge to accommodate this. Um, you can buy these templates or you can make them yourself as I've done here. I really really like these clear templates because I can see through them to the grain below and make an adjustment for aesthetics if I wanted to. Uh, when I mark them out, I mark them with uh, I scratch a line. Let me see if you can hear this. It's a scratched line in with a razor knife or a marking knife uh, on the face that's going to be towards the material. That way I can line it up very accurately. It's not trying to line up a line that's a quarter inch away through the clear material, if you know what I mean. Uh, so let's get to laying this out, and um, I guess that's the next step. Here we go. I've jointed one edge of this fingerboard blank so that it's nice and straight. Um, the other side is still not straight. You can see the straight edge is rocking against it, but I don't care because that's all going to get cut off in a little while anyway. Um, I've measured to where the center of my fretboard wants to be and set up a combination square so I can mark this out. Now, you know I like using knives. You can use a pencil for this, uh, but the knife I feel makes a much more accurate line, uh, if not kind of hard to see in this Cocobolo but I can, uh, I can set a tool down into that and find that line uh, to see it better. A little bit of chalk into the scratch line works really nicely. So I could go ahead and scribe all the way down here with the combination square, but I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to make another mark down here and then use the straight edge to create a straight line. In this case, I can set my knife right into that mark now, put the straight edge against it, and then move the straight edge to the mark I have down here, guaranteeing I've got a nice straight line. This is a little arbitrary, but I'm going to come down about maybe an inch from the top of my fretboard. I know I've got the room. And I'm going to use this drill bit to mark, I can set it right down in that notch that I've made, to mark where the nut is going to be. I've installed a straight pin in my template, and I can use that now to locate the template on the fretboard. With the nut end of the template securely in place with the pin, I now simply need to rotate the template until I've hit my mark and make another hole for another pin and my template is secure. Now I can mark both sides of the fretboard. This is the finished fretboard dimension right now that I'm marking. It does not take into account the binding. I'll deal with that in a little while.
Fret placement is super critical to the proper playing of an instrument. A difference in minor thousandths of an inch in the placement of a fret can cause all kinds of tonal problems in the playing of the instrument. You can make your own templates or you can do an accurate layout, an accurate cut using calipers or whatever, but these templates are worth their weight in gold. I mean, it's just they're already accurate, they're already perfect. You just need to make a jig to accommodate uh, the whatever system it is you come up with. This one's from LMI. Uh, this particular template's got a 25.4 scale on one side and a 24.9 scale on the other side, two of the most popular uh, scale dimensions. But I have to be super critical and super pay, pay attention here that I get the right one, otherwise I'll be making two fretboards here. So I'm going with the 25.4 uh, this time. And uh, most of you, if you're doing a, a first instrument, will probably have a, uh, a properly sized back saw and a miter box arrangement. Uh, I stopped using that years ago. It, it works fine, but uh, I just went for a powered option. Uh, I don't see, I don't think I've ever seen anybody use one quite like the one I've got. Um, there's table saw systems and, and other systems uh, to do this, but let me show you how I do it. This cradle arrangement is similar to what you would see for a miter box with a typical hand saw, except it accommodates a trim saw that I have. You'll see that in a minute. But what's critical to e any system that you use here is that there be an indexing pin of some sort that the, uh, the template can ride in. And in this case, you can see it through the clear plexiglass here. There it is. It's a small pin that has been placed just off to the side of where the blade's going to cut because I don't want to have to hit it. But that offset is going to be maintained as we go through the cut. Uh, and I'll be able to start by sliding that groove into onto the pin right there. Uh, there we go. And then making a cut and then I should be able to move this, slide it along to the next one. There's my first fret and then there's my second fret. And the main thing here is that all of this needs to be pretty snug and tight and well fitting. I've got the template put into the jig and uh, it's indexed onto the, the first slot, which is going to be for cutting where the nut's going to be located on the fretboard. Uh, I also forgot to mention, you'll see there's a small groove cut into the fence here. It's a little place for the chips to fall into so that this, this uh, template always fits up tight up against the fence. I've got some uh, double sticky tape right here that I've put on the back of the fretboard. And now I'm going to slide this in here and just hold it up off of the uh, off the template enough so this tape doesn't stick and then I'm going to align that mark that I made in for where the nut belongs right with the groove where the cut's going to be made and then slide it down and secure it to the template with the double sticky tape. Okay, if everything lines up right now my saw is going to be able to make the cut. I haven't adjusted the depth yet. Uh, I have to take a look at what I've got going on here. But I've got a, a special little slotting blade here that I had to make uh, an arbor to make it fit my saw. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and set the depth here and I'm going to make sure that my cut is deep enough so that the tang on my fret is going to fit after I've put the radius on the top. Now make sure that whatever blade you've got, whatever saw you're using, is going to match up perfectly with the particular tang on the particular fret you're going to be using. Different makers have different tang sizes. Uh, too tight and, uh, and you'll induce a whole lot of arc into it. Uh, too loose and your frets are going to fall out. <laughs> If you've got a table saw, here's a great jig for cutting the shape of your fingerboard and getting an accurate, true square and all that good stuff. Uh, not everybody's got a table saw, so in a second I'm going to go over a uh, router table way of doing this. Most people can set up a router table of some sort. Um, you can obviously do these cuts and, and plane by hand with planers, uh, but most people are going to want to be using some sort of a mechanism for this. Uh, this table saw unit actually makes a very clean cut with a, with a I even have a rip blade in here and it's, it's going to do a nice job of it. The thing I like about this is, uh, especially if you have a, a, a material that wants to split a little bit under 
uh, a router blade going the wrong direction, the climb cut. And again, we'll go over that in a minute. Um, this one with the table saw blade makes a very clean cut. Uh, I'm going to set this one up to cut this fretboard as if I wasn't going to bind it, and then I'll take the next step uh, over at the router table to remove a little more material to allow for the binding. To set this jig up, first thing I'm going to do is move the blade out of the way. Because that's where my fretboard wants to be set up. So I've just got it out of the way for the moment. And I'm going to just kind of roughly put it there. Uh, and then I need to have a way to make sure that the fretboard is oriented to the jig properly. Uh, to do that, I've got this fancy jig. You can see I used this for some truss rod testing at one point. Uh, but it's got a note on it that says 2 and 9 sixteenths. That's the distance that my block is from this edge to the outside of this utility knife blade that I've just glued on to the edge of it. Uh, that is the distance I need to set this fence here uh, to bring this mark to the outside of the, the saw blade once I've raised it up. So in this instance, I can simply, I can actually put the razor knife into the groove. I don't know, you know if you can see that. There we go. Um, put it into the groove here that was cut when I marked my template before and then I can slide the block over to the fence and I know it's in the right location. I'm going to kind of eyeball this one right here. Uh, need to have a little clamping block here otherwise the clamps don't want to do their job. I'm going to lock this end down. I'll do the same thing up at the other end. I'm going to drop the blade down into that groove and then move the fretboard over until my block rests on the fence over here. I'm going to lock that down. I'm going to check over here and make sure nothing moved. I just have to do this. Actually, that was pretty good. Um, so now that I am the right distance from the fence and locked down, I can raise the blade and make the cut. I've set up one of my binding bearings here. This, this one's going to make a 3 seconds inch rabbit cut. Uh, and I'm going to run the bearing on my template that has been secured to my fretboard. Uh, I've got the locating pins, but I've also got some double sticky tape on here. I don't want this moving at all, or I'm going to have to go back to step one again. Uh, normally, I would be able to run this direction on the fretboard if everything was nice, uh, straight grain, uh, because the, the, the um, the router bit would be cutting away from the natural tendency of the grain to chip and I would only have to do a climb cut on this side because now I'm going the other direction I'm going into it kind of like rubbing a, a dog's fur the wrong direction or cat's fur the wrong direction don't want to do that here uh, but this one also has there's a little bit of a of a inconsistency in the grain I got a little uh, little swale there if you will uh, if I were to run this through straight in one shot, I run the risk of chipping out in that location. So I'm going to do a climb cut first and then finish off by going straight. Whenever I'm alone with you, you make me feel like I am young again. Whenever Now, I've got a fancy radius jig that I can use with my edge sander over there, but most people aren't going to have something like that. And it's actually not all that much work to put a radius on a fretboard at this stage, at least the, the rough one, uh, with just a simple sanding block. You can buy, this is going to be a 16 inch radius, pretty standard for an acoustic guitar. Uh, you can buy them from a lot of different outlets. I happen to make this one out of a piece of lace wood. It was kind of cool, a little pendulum router jig and I was able to make a couple of these up at a time. I've got some fresh 100 grit sandpaper on here, uh, fairly aggressive but not making huge scratch marks in, in this fingerboard. Uh, and I'm just going to start working at it, uh, using a little bit of chalk on the surface to monitor how I'm, how I'm finishing this down and being very aware not to sand too much over the edges because edges sand faster than faces do. If I concentrate on the center, if I concentrate on the middle, 
the edges are going to take care of themselves. What I don't want to do is to roll over because I still have to put my binding on here. And I'm doing this before the binding because you're going to see in the next step uh, how I'm going to make sure that I've got the proper depth on my curves. So now I've got the fretboard radius roughed in. It's nowhere near complete. I'm, I'm going to do that later on when I'm doing the final setup. But one thing that I did when I set up for the depth of kerf for the frets was I made it almost exactly perfect with the fretboard material flat. I've now taken off a couple of thousandths of an inch on either side. Uh, I suspect that if I put a fret in here right now it would bottom out before the, the crown hit the top of the fretboard here and that wouldn't be good. So uh, one of the reasons I've done this is at this point, now that I've got the curve, I can make a curved bottom for my fret slot, preserving ever so slightly a couple of thousandths of an inch worth of material here. Uh, and I could only do it now once the fretboard has been curved. And I'm going to do that with a curving saw. I've uh, got a little piece of plexiglass that I've bolted onto here. Uh, it's actually just about perfect down towards the handle and just a hair deep up towards the tip. So I'm going to be able to start cutting in each one of these slots towards the handle, but I'm going to finish, out, uh, finish up out towards the tip, and it's going to give me a little bit of material that I can remove or that the next guy can remove for when he's doing a refret on this without having to dig out each one of my fret slots. I'm preserving just a hair worth of material. Is it going to make a difference? Probably not, but I'm doing it just to give myself that extra little bit of strength. Is this necessary? Absolutely not. I could have cut these straight across and a little bit deeper than the fret tang was going to be. Um, some people will fill that in with crazy glue. I think that that's crazy, but anyway, uh, it could be straight across. But this is just one subtle step in the process. If you'd like to give it a try, I encourage it. It does preserve just a little bit more of the strength of the fretboard itself. Whenever I'm alone with you You make me feel like I am free again Whenever I'm alone with you You make me feel like I am clean I will always love you. I will always love you. Here we are, almost ready for the inlay. Uh, one of the things that, that some people notice is that once you've put the radius on the fretboard, uh, because the fretboard is narrower at the nut than it is towards the body, you're going to be a little bit thicker up here visually along the binding than you are down here because you're at a different part in the curve of the of the arc of the fretboard. It's very subtle. Uh, it's not important to get rid of, but if you want to, here's a little jig that'll help you do that. Now I'm going to be able to use a drum sander, but this could be modified to be used with a scraper or a planer. Um, it's a pretty simple thing. I've got two pieces of wood mounted to a piece of plywood. Each one of these has got a rabbit down each edge. When I put my fingerboard in here, my fretboard, uh, that rests on those two edges there and allows the belly that's going down now of the fretboard uh, to fall down into the space underneath. Now I've got this side is loosened, it wiggles just a little bit right now. Uh, each fretboard is going to be just slightly different from the last one. So I'm just going to hold these tight with the fretboard in place and tighten down these screws. Once I've done that, I can secure the fretboard into the jig 
and run it through my drum sander. You make me feel like I am clean again. However far away, I will always love you. However long I stay, I will always love you. After dealing with that oily coca bolo, this dry catalogs is just a dream. Good luck with your fretboards. See you next time.